The car parks in Marazine have some of the best picturesque views you could ask for. But like most of the beauty spots of this country, camping is strictly prohibited in all three car parks overlooking the beach. But not all wild campers are reckless, so I may have found a solution. But this solution probably isn't going to help me on this visit. And yes, I get it. If I can't camp here, what's the point of coming to Marazine? Number one, you've got the mount right there, right there. So having dinner tonight is going to be very picturesque. And number two, my family are coming here tomorrow for a day at the beach. So I figured I'd stay here overnight. So my plan is I'm going to pay to park here for a couple of hours just so that I can have my dinner, have a nice view, maybe go for a nice walk. And then I'm going to leave and find somewhere to park up for the night. And then tomorrow morning, I'll come back here for my beach day with my family. Yes. Yes, I am in the old van this evening. And that's because the transit is finally in the garage. And that's another reason why I'm here tonight. I heard from the garage today and it wasn't good news. It's got zero oil pressure. Right. Um, so I, I would be saying I'll put an engine in it because right. it doesn't sound healthy either. So rather than just be at home in, in a bad mood, I figured I would take myself away on my own for a nice relaxing night. And before anyone asks, I'm not giving up on the old van. I'm gonna keep going, even though it's gonna cost me a new engine. But to be honest, I kind of had that as like worst case scenario in my head anyway. So I'm probably just gonna to have to take the hit with that one. But I'm feeling optimistic. It's all gonna be fine. At least I'll have the peace of mind knowing that touch wood, I shouldn't have any mechanical issues with it being a new engine. So we're going to start this evening with dinner. Oh, and a uh, non-alcoholic beverage, which this evening is, it's Copperberg Pear Cider Alcohol Free. Let's give it a go. Cheers. No, it's not bad actually. It actually does taste like cider. The meal of choice this evening is going to be a burger. You can buy burgers in packs of two, so that's absolutely fine. I could eat two burgers, but why is it when you get your burger buns, you can only get them in packs of four or six? I mean, I have seen packs of two brioche rolls before, but not all supermarkets do it. They need to sort of cater more to Billy No Mates like me. I'm hoping it's not too windy to start cooking out here. I mean, it should be fine, but I'm just concerned that the wind might uh, blow my flame out. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. There's no point stressing about it. The last time I cooked burgers in a van was at Porth Keras Divers. And I cheated then and I'm cheating now because I've bought burgers as opposed to making my own. But these things happen. Do you know what? After all this time of having this van, I still don't have any cooking utensils. <laughs> Which is funny because I bought everything for the new van, but you can't use that because it's for the new van. As far as time scales go on the new van being fixed, I have no idea. They're gonna get back to me with a complete price and how long it's gonna take for them to get a new engine and put it in. But hey ho, these things happen, right? Whee. I mean, come on, out here cooking burgers with this fantastic view behind me will take any of your worries or any of your bad news that's going to get you down, just completely gets rid of it. And, you know, in a way, thankfully, I've still got this old girl to cheer me up. Shielding my flame from the wind. I'm going to go for two bits of plastic cheese, as I call this, because Let's face it, it's not real cheese, is it? I'm gonna go for two pieces just because I'm, I'm a fatty, you know? It's bad enough that it's spitting, but the wind's sort of drawing it towards me.
There we go. Now a little bit of ketchup because you know you gotta have ketchup. There we go. Ta da! We're gonna take the food and the cider. We're gonna sit down on the beach. Sit. I'm gonna sit over on this sand dune over here. Now I'm just gonna, can you see up my shorts then? And now I'm just gonna sit here for a bit, admire the view, because I'm not gonna go find my park up just yet, because I kind of think that I need to get there after dark. All right, I can't just sit here. Let's go for a walk along the causeway. And for those of you that don't know what the causeway is, where St. Michael's Mount is there, there's a path that you can walk along from the beach out to the mount at low tide. And as the tide's gone out, I figured it'd be rude not to. So when the tide's in along here, this whole causeway here gets literally submerged in water. Now I did make a video here like a couple of years ago and I literally snorkeled the entire causeway when it was completely submerged underwater. And even though this just looks like rocks and seaweed on the side, it actually looks completely different when it's underwater. Right, this could be the end of the road. I mean, it's shallow. Okay, so here are my thoughts. <laughs> I definitely know the tide's going out, so I'm not gonna get stuck over there. So the only thing to do would be flip-flops off and just walk through. Quite pleasant. According to the park for night at, it shows all the car parks that we're not allowed to park in. All of these where it says, no overnight parking, blah, 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 blah. But if you scroll along, almost on your way to Prey Sands or Perinofno, there's a spot just here. It says, lay by, no signs to say no overnight parking, view of the sea and St. Michael's Mount seating area, and a little bit of grass for dogs. So I think we'll give that a go. But like I said, it's only, Eight o'clock at the moment, so it's still a little bit early, but give it an hour or so and we'll head over there. All right, now, oh, I set up, didn't I? Boom. Now, it's not quite dark, but my parking's gonna run out, so I need to move now anyway. So, let's get going. This place says six hours, no return within 12. So it like, looks like they've had the same idea as me, but nah, not risking it. I believe it's down here. Viewpoint tourist information, blah, blah, blah. But all of signs for my life. Right. Six hours, no return within 12 hours. This says the same thing. There are vans here, so we've got that one there. 
and then the more sort of campers down here as well. There's no signs in this bit saying that you can't stay here, so I might just park up. Why does it smell like piss? I mean, I get it, right? People are on their long journeys, they need a wee, where do they stop off? In a lay-by, and what do they do? They come straight to the bushes here and have a piss. So the problem is, isn't like people that are staying in their vans overnight, because the majority of them have toilets. The issue is the people that need to stop off and have a pee, and it stinks. Now they say you're supposed to be able to see St. Michael's Mount from here, but maybe it's just because I'm vertically challenged, but I can't see it. But I do have another option. <laughs> I still can't see it and I'm like literally stood on the roof of the van now. A little bit close to the road. But I've slept in worse areas with more road noise than that, so I'm gonna be fine for tonight. I actually have a solution to all of this uh, sort of wild camping in vans. And it all depends on the council really. Hear me out, anyone that owns a van can apply and they'll probably have to pay for it but apply for a license to be able to free camp in this country. So that means that you can stay in car parks overnight, you can stay in laybys overnight, and essentially what it means is that you have a sticker on the back of your van or car or whatever it is that says that you have a license to do that. Now this all falls apart if people start abusing it. They start emptying their chemical toilets out the side of the road, they start leaving litter behind. But the way it could work is if anyone spots anyone else who has a sticker on the back of their van mistreating their license, they can report them and then they can have their license removed. That way the minority don't ruin it for the rest of us. Now I have no idea how one would take anything like this to the council. So if anyone knows how you can approach the council with any ideas like that that they will listen to, then let me know in the comments. I just realised being up on the roof isn't that stealth. Now this isn't 100% my idea. I actually got the idea from when I was traveling New Zealand. And in order for you to free camp in many, many free camping spots, or pretty much anywhere, your van had to have a sticker on the back, which meant that it qualified for you to free camp. And some of the things that your van had to have when you were out there was a chemical toilet, a gray water tank, and something else which I can't remember. But we could have similar rules here. You have to have a toilet, that would prevent anyone from having a pee in the bushes. You have to have a grey water tank, which means that you would, whether it's a sink or whether it's just somewhere for you to empty your water inside the van so that you're not actually tipping it outside. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying it has to be all these rules, but it's something that we could negotiate on with the council. Another part of the license could be that you could only stay in one place overnight for one night. So just say that you're arriving somewhere, like Marazine, just say you've traveled down from up country somewhere and you haven't been able to find yourself a campsite. You can stay in a lay-by legally overnight until the next day when you actually find somewhere that you can camp. Now preventing people from staying more than one night will literally stop anyone from moving into a spot and staying there for the long term. Because I understand that's why it's so difficult in this country. They don't want a group of vans or sort of living in one area, creating a mess, possibly creating a nuisance. But the issue is people do it anyway. But I think if they could just give a little bit back, everyone would probably be a lot more respectful. I definitely worked up a sweat doing that. I went for no duvet tonight, just the sheet, because it's so warm, a bit muggy, but all good. Right, I will bid you farewell. Well, I say that, but I'm just gonna watch, attempt to watch a movie or do some editing. But anyway, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. I believe this.
this, but I'm clicking order anyway. Good morning. It got so warm in here in the night, I ended up, it was about half past two in the morning. And I actually opened the back door slightly and slept with the door open all night from half two. I propped it open with a little kid's spade that I found at the beach a little while ago. Don't need these, it's quite overcast at the minute. Right, I suppose I better pack up. It's a little bit chilly. Let's just hope that the sun comes out for this beach day I've got. Ugh. Right, let's go. Please take it. Right, something's just fallen over. And now it's just a waiting game, I guess. My wife and baby were the first to arrive. And I took this opportunity to give my son Charlie his first experience of how cold the sea is. He wasn't a huge fan. And about half an hour later, the sun came out and the rest of my family decided to show up. We got set up and me, my dad and my nephew Harry decided to go for a snorkel. This was my nephew's first time going out of his depth in the sea. Harry, I'm so close with your crew, mate. Uh, is, yeah, is that what is that? I know. Now adjacent to St Michael's Mount, there's a little island called Great Hogus. I had the great idea of swimming out there, bearing in mind my nephew's only been snorkeling with me a few times and I'm not sure how confident he's going to be swimming all that way. Let's just say the boy did me proud. It all depends. How do you feel about your first proper snorkel, Harry? You peed when you did it. I peed when I did it, I felt great! <laughs> yeah, sit up here. He's <laughs> filming you. I think, I think you might be a better swimmer than Grandad now. Yeah. Oh yes, sure. Great Hogus took us about 30 minutes to swim out there, which is really weird because at low tide, you can walk there. You see, at low tide, you can pretty much just walk out to this. And what a fantastic way to end a camping session than with some time with the family. You conquered the ocean. That's what you oh, did, man. <laughs> right, that's all, that's us all packed up, ready to go. I tell you what, if I was sunburnt yesterday, I'm definitely sunburnt today. It actually turned out to be a really nice day. I'd just like to take this opportunity as well to thank everyone who's bought me a beer through the link in the description. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And that's about it for today. I'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.